Welcome back. And uh, let's take a look at the newspapers this morning. Uh, we're dealing with kidnap cases precedent. Uh, Minister resigns over leaked uh, tape. Uh, one a big issue we'll take a look at. The Ghanaian Times has the kidnapping story. We'll deal with uh, kidnappings, President assures. And the Rocks in Bukhari resigns over leaked tape, uh, also carried by the uh, Times. The finder this morning says, um, slow start. A photograph of the registration of uh, the mass uh, registration Ghana card here. Also, the NPP and NDC agree on scope of dialogue on disbanding party uh, militias. That's, uh, that story is also on the uh, finder. Those are some of the newspapers I have with me this morning. Those who do the talking, Member of Parliament for the Futu uh, constituency, a member of the NPP, Honorable Alexander Finnemarke is here. Good morning. Good morning, sir. And hope you're doing great. Very well, I'm doing well. You'll be missing for a long time. Welcome back home. And then uh, the National Communication Officer of the NDC, Sami Jenfi, is also here. Sami, good morning to you. Hope you're doing great. Bye, girls, mm, thanks for uh, joining us. So we'll take a look at uh, some issues with the kidnappings. The president's once again assured uh, we're dealing with it. Uh, Mr. Roxin Bukhari has also resigned. Uh, we'll take a look at that. But let's start on this. So yesterday, the University of Education, Wudba, uh, um, over the weekend, sorry, held uh, its congregation and several issues uh, were uh, discussed there at the congregation. The speeches uh, showed that there's still some uh, uneasy calm at the place and uh, the Minister of State in charge of tertiary education is asking that the party should lend uh, fullest cooperation and support to build peace and reconciliation. Um, he says that the disaffection at the campus could re erode the gains that have been made. But which way do we go? How do we deal with this? Uh, let me quickly get uh, the member of parliament for food to, to uh, start this conversation. On about Finger Markin, uh, where we are, what Professor Kwesi Yanka said yesterday is not new to the university. The president has said a similar thing at the investiture of Professor, uh, uh, the vice chancellor, Professor Afro, uh, Bruni. Now it's been reiterated. Is it that it is hitting on rocks and so a, a drastic action need to be taken? Or what do we do? Well, um, thank you. Um, I didn't want to be talking about UEW matters again um, for some good reasons. But, um, mm, but once you, since you, you listen listening and you are back, I, I need to get no you problem. to yes. But um, let me premise my, my views on what Professor Yanka said mm. on the 26th of April 2019. And quote, the Ministry of Education can simply not be enthused about a never-ending crisis at UUW. We had hoped that the admonition by His Excellency the President, Nana Dedanko Akubado, at the investiture of VC Afubruni in September last year would have been heeded. He urged the VC and management to take steps to restore peace and reconcile the broken university. That peace of Fadi to the contrary, appeared to have triggered more muzzle flexing by various factions on campus. Then again, quote, any sign of an emerging drama in Winneba of two vice chancellors in one university will of course be ominous and not acceptable. But I would expect the governing council of UEW to take steps to broker a resolution ahead of this bizarre possibility. Emphasis, bizarre possibility. I refer preferably to an out of court settlement. Con to conclude, quote again, he said, universities should be quintessential enclaves for social and ethnic integration rather than typical sites for the balkanization of ethnicities. Then um, Daily Graphic in its editorial of yesterday also said, quote, the Daily Graphic is not happy that there seems to be simmering disaffection at UEW that has the potential to erode most of the gains made by the university. There is still on easy calm although school has reopened for academic work to resume. Daily Guide concludes, a daily graphic daily concludes, graphic. our universities must learn to handle their grievances 
before they escalate into strikes and shutdowns. The advice by the minister to the UEW is apt, and the parties must listen and act on it for the good of all. So, adopting these views, mm. I would want to add that Father Fubroni must listen and listen well. Um, the bizarre possibility, as referred to by Professor Yanka, Professor Yanka. must be taken seriously. Of two vice chancellors. I, I'm saying, saying the bizarre possibility, oh. that phrase must be taken seriously by him. He must reflect. And um, if in the past people hardened their hearts and it led to certain consequences, he must learn from this. Um, I personally um, supported the cause for restructuring uh, right things being done way back 2013 as an MP, largely because he, Afubroni, had led the crusade, felt mm. that things were not right. And I am clear in my mind that the very things that he himself hoped to have changed or was looking forward to be doing for the betterment of the university. I mean, uh, isn't what I'm seeing. It has deteriorated. When I was talking about it, the impression was created as though Afenio is interfering. So I stayed back. But today, everybody else is seeing. Mm -hmm. Graphic is dedicating its editorial to what is happening there. And if they think that they can do things their own way, you see, half for the law, it is there. If you wouldn't listen, and perhaps you want a court to make an order, uh, maybe that's what they are waiting for. Let me run you through a few individuals. Somebody like uh, Dr. Fori Bequin, the question is, mm. what, 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 what did he do? What has he done? Those who were dismissed or I mean, sacked uh, or demoted. Shine like baby, if you are saying that somebody has sent a WhatsApp, WhatsApp communicating court matters and you have, you have de 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 demoted him, what about you who, who brought documents that some irregularities were there in procurement? And you are there. Which is also uh, against the rules of, of the Of course. So I, I think that if the opportunity for reconciliation is there, proceed. On the 15th of January, I was in court. I was at the Supreme Court. When the Supreme Court made a point that, look, reconcile, pay off those that, I mean, after all, you are an employer. If you think there were some issues and you've got, you know, taking somebody out of office, you kicked him out, please compensate. It was clear. And that was well communicated to them. So I don't see this muzzle flexing and all that, articles here and there, insulting people and all that, if they still think that other people don't deserve to eat. If Father Fubroni thinks that other people don't deserve to feed their families, mm. their families are not supposed to go to school and they should sit at home. Maybe sooner than later, he may find himself... Uh, on the, on the wrong side of the aisle. Mm -mm. It's up to you. I'm grateful uh, for uh, that. But, Sami, th this issue of reconciling the university, uh, the, there were calls for Professor Afroboni to, to quit or perhaps be removed. W where do we go? What is just and fair must be done. Uh, Bright, uh, let me first of all say a very good morning to our cherished viewers. Mm and um, indicate that I'll be very snappy on this issue. Right. The member of parliament is here. He's shed uh, light on the matter. Mm. But what I can say is that as a political party, we are deeply worried about the developments, the unfortunate developments, which eventually culminated into the closure of the main campus of UUW to the detriment of students. And any objective assessment of the situation will tell you that we are seeing these challenges at UUW because of the continuous and excessive interference of the Akufuada government in academic freedoms. That is what is eroding the gains UUW has made over the years. That is what is distracting that key academic you know, institution from its core mandate of teaching, learning, communal development, and so on. We are very worried. We are here because once upon a time, 
for political motives, political purposes, people decided to hound the then vice chancellor out of office without any lawful justification and on the basis of some frivolous allegations which had been peddled against the man. And our brother here, the Honorable Member of Parliament, was very instrumental in that. You see, so you, 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 you cannot but make the point that he himself has been part of the problem because I have listened to him on other platforms where he's made the point that he was misled, more or less, by evidence presented to him by the current Vice Chancellor, Professor uh, Afubuni, who sought to you know, um, exploit the situation at the time to his favor. They got uh, Professor Mauto Avocat out for nothing, made frivolous allegations against him. You know, today, Iyoko has investigated the issues I'm told. He's been cleared. He's been vindicated. The facts are now, have now been laid bare that, indeed, he didn't engage in the shady, you know, corrupt deals that were leveled against him. And so we have victimized an innocent man for nothing. And in the process, we have undermined the academic program, the academic focus, and the academic freedoms of that important institution. Now, this person that our brother, uh, the Honorable Member of Parliament, Honorable Afenio Marken, helped to bring to office, is the one today destroying the school according to him, sucking people on how, the basis of ethnicity, they, how, ruling how like an emperor. The it should it no, be a no, matter no, no. of first of all you the, need the that is what that is why I started by saying that all. the only way you resolve such a matter is by doing what is just and fair. You understand? If people have been dismissed on the basis of ethnicity, on the basis of expressing dissent, mm -hmm. on the basis of criticizing a vice chancellor or expressing divergent opinion and all that, and they have been dismissed, that is not right. And that must be corrected. The people involved must be reinstated. You listen to some of the reasons that form the basis for the dismissal of some of these people, and you cringe. You wonder whether we are living in Somalia, or we are living in Syria, or whether the vice chancellor there is ruling as a, as a Bukasa, or as, a, as, a, or as an Idi Amin, and so on. And, in, and I think that he's had the effrontery and the temerity to do that, because he thought at a point that he had the back end of President Tegufuado, and Honorable Lafanyo Marken, who manipulated the processes to get him into office. And today, well, it is good at least that he has had a change of mind. But it is my hope that if eventually this vice chancellor is going out, out of the way and the old vice chancellor reinstated, which I believe should happen, because once he was removed on the basis of lies and on the basis of, you know, clear injustice and all that, they, the right thing to do under the circumstances is for him to be reinstated. I hope that when that is done, mm -hmm. This government, this government and key functionaries and members of that government, functionaries of the ruling New Patriotic Party, will respect the independence and the academic freedoms of UUW and all other public universities and depart from this inglorious path okay. of undermining academic freedoms and you know, uh, politicizing academic institutions, thereby you know, undermining their core functions and what these institutions are supposed okay. to focus on. I'm grateful. That is all I can say okay. about this. Right, let me, yeah. let me, yeah. let me a, a quickly quick one. Yeah, yes, sure. a quick one. You yeah. see, it's unfortunate that um, my colleague would choose the path he has uh, taken. Um, so you see, that these are some of the things that uh, distort efforts at resolving matters. You see, immediately you start on that partisan attack. You lose the substance of the matters in issue. And I would have wished mm. that sometimes as politicians, when the issues come up and there's an opportunity to comment on, we take away this issue of and the NDC and the MPP and all that. My brother must at least be fair in tracing when I started the issue of UEW matters. I myself was a part-time lecturer there, and I know some of the injustices that occurred in times past. Now, for you to now attempt to talk about 
and a coup for the government interference. Then, you are more or less trying to say that, oh, it is a partisan victimization of somebody. And that is most unfortunate. At what point must we intervene on the matter? Now, if you come and sit here and talk about the fact that, in all fairness, you use the phrase, I have manipulated the system. I mean, with the greatest respect, uh, the, the, the least you can say okay. is to say that at least... So the point is that I, you, you are not involved in whatever... No, no, I'm saying... Is that, please, is that the point? I'm saying that as a member of parliament there, my involvement on the issues regarding that university has been for the betterment of the university. Okay. And I have been candid and fair in my approach and consistent with matters thereof. It is not appropriate for anybody, it wouldn't be so, for you to come and say that somebody has manipulated or there is political interference. When you do that, when you do that, and I tell you, when you do that and others in your party begin to sing that along, then when anybody wants to deal with the matter, you are more or less boxing the person into a corner that it is partisan. And those who are perpetrating the injustice will now think that, oh, okay. after all, the thing has taken a partisan turn. For once, can we look at the issue okay. and be honest and discuss it? Than to think that uh, okay, it is partisan what I'm attacking saying, government. What I'm, on this I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm surprised. Yeah, but I'm if not, that I'm is not, the not, way you I'm want not, to go. I'm not attacking Honorable. If that's the way you want to go. the fact that he has had a change of position on this matter. I've been consistent but, in my but, position, but, but, please. No, but, but please, then you didn't follow the story. For us to point out that he got it wrong with okay. regards to Professor Mawute Awoke. Okay. And perhaps he was a main contributing factor to where we have got into this. Ah, but okay. I was in Brussels. But that is Gentlemen, let's move, move on. Always been in court. Let, let, let's move on. That your change in position is something we don't appreciate. It, let's, let's move on. Now, no, I don't need to are, change position. Uh, uh, Gentlemen, no, I have, now, I have no, moved on. on. Right. Let, let's go to right. the president. Right. Let's go right. to the president. <laughs> right. Please. <laughs> please. Let, I don't... No, no, please. If let, we want to deal with an issue, let's deal with it and close it properly. I am saying... I am saying... I am saying... It is not changing position. Mm -hmm. It's being consistent on what you think is right, fair, and just. Okay. That is my position. Subject okay, I am grateful. The uh, uh, Daily Guide this <laughs> morning says the minister resigns with a leak tape. Waste. Daily Graphic has a make story. Times them. has a story. The story says the minister of state at the presidency, uh, Roxen uh, uh, Bukari, has resigned his post over an audio recording which went viral on social media. Now, uh, he's an uh, immediate past minister for the Upper East region. Uh, sure, the story is well known. Uh, the tape between, the conversation between him and Edward Additi, the journalist, uh, resulted in his resignation. We're told yesterday the president has accepted his resignation and wished him well uh, in his endeavors. That's the story. He was a, a former MC uh, during President Kufo's administration. That's uh, a story on the daily guide. I know what marking. Um, the minister resigning over a leak tip, um, big news? Well, you see, it's a matter of personal conviction. We are in a political enterprise. Mm. And when there are issues that, as a person, you think that it may disrupt the course of government business, um, an allegation has been made. He says that, look, let me stay away from government. Let me resign. Uh, certain issues have been raised. And he has communicated same to the president. That, Look, I don't want to be that, that spot in your government mm. business. I want to be out of government. That in itself will give that opportunity for investigation in the matter. I don't know to what extent the, the journalist would want to go. Mm. Um, I don't know whether he's just thrown the tape out there or that he has made some uh, a report to the police. It, it depends on what they themselves uh, want to do or what the journalists would want to do about the tape. But for now, the fact that the man has taken a position, now look, this thing is out there. Um, whether uh, what is on the tape is exactly what transpired mm. or whether he actually intended doing what he had said on the tape, or whether in an attempt 
at solving a problem. Uh, he, he, he acted in excess of what his mandate was. He today says that I want to step aside from government. He has graciously resigned. Mm. The next step is for the law enforcement. That is, if they, 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 they evaluate and would want to uh, proceed, then they would proceed from there. So I think that he is taking his principled uh, stand on the matter, mm. and he has left government. That, that, and the president has accepted his resignation. Mm. The, the issue is linked to a Chinese mining uh, company, uh, Shanxi Mining. Uh, does it not, once again, muddy this whole Ghana-Chinese thing? How does it? I mean, what, was, he what, was what, what intervening what, on behalf of a Chinese mining company? What is, what is it about a Ghana-Chinese thing? I mean, the relationship between China mm. and Ghana is like all other bilateral relationships that we have with other countries. Mm. Currently, I mean, we have a program with the Chinese. I mean, uh, the NDC had a program with the Chinese, a relationship with the Chinese. Mm. We know about the CDB facility. Right. It took, I mean, to NDC time. It is not the first time the Chinese built the foreign ministry, I mean, for us. You have a Jubilee House, mm. um, the Indian government supporting, the American government, I mean, supporting, and so many other programs, the British government. I mean, we, we, we have relationships with countries across the group, okay? The German government, et cetera, et cetera. So it is not about this thing about the Chinese that you want to refer to. Currently, this Sino-Hydro Sino thing. thing. Yes. It is an opportunity to grow our local industries in that sector. Instead of exporting raw bauxite, and you know, I've been one person who has advocated against this raw export, I mean, the, 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 the exportation of uh, the bauxite, because if we don't add value, we gain nothing. Those guys there, I've worked there before, and I know what happens there. Mm. You know, they even bring their trucks in without paying taxes, as though they have license to mine, uh, 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 license to haul. Meanwhile, they don't have license to haul. And they bring their own trucks. They send the bauxite out. They don't add value. They go and sell to their parent company. And we don't even exactly know how much they sell to their, their parent company. It's a serious matter. It's been there for many years. So if today there's a new arrangement whereupon we're going to have local industries, Ghanaians will participate and would have value for money. The better it is. Mm. I don't see how that would give room for a Chinese to engage in illegalities and it would amount to government not taking action. Listen, on the back on the, on the backdrop of what the senior minister has said. You, you see, you see, um, right. Does it not show some kind of protection for these right. Chinese You places? see, sometimes in communication, the media can pick you out of context. Or sometimes in making a point, mm. it could be misconstrued. What did Osafu Mafu say? Did Osafu Mafu say that government did not want to prosecute the Aisha lady because of Sino Hydro? No, he never said that. He didn't say that. No, he never said that. Osafu Mafu was talking about, do you waste your time there on this prosecution rather than growing your economy or developing opportunities? Is he, let us quote Ezali or play that tape. Mm. What did Osafu, how did Osafu Mafu link Aisha to a Sino Hydro? So, so you're saying he didn't mean He was that. saying, he you're was saying, saying he, he was saying, that. listen, he was saying clearly, and you don't need any secondary interpretation. Osafu Mavu was saying that let us focus on relationships and focus on matters mm. that would put food on our table than to get into petty issues. Now, the person is engaged in an illegality. Mm. You go to court. You, he's jailed or she's jailed or that she's fined. She's still in the country. Don't you think it is better 
for the country to exercise a judgment that look you for what and with these and these things that you are doing we, instead of wasting time on prosecution and all that mm -hmm. we are deporting you you think that it was a wrong decision to deport them the woman well, I... in other jurisdictions wait in other jurisdictions foreigners commit offenses mm. instead of perhaps the long period of prosecution and all that the state could exercise a discretion deport so okay. are you saying that this is wrong to deport okay. the woman? Okay, I, I have not said that. I'm only asking you. So did uh, Osafu Mafu link, link the deportation? Say that. So, it's not, so it's not my say that. suggestion, okay. right? It's I, exactly what Osafu Mafu said. said are that you, I'm referring are you to. able to reconcile the deputy minister saying that Mr. Osafu Mafu's position isn't that of government and to you saying that what he said isn't what I am talking what about? What is his position? What is his position? That, and what that, is that, the position that, of government? That we, in the Sino agreement there are vaccines and that the lady had to be deported because of some of these things. Na, Osafu Mafu. Now let me let me let me Qu quickly for, and let for, me the, for the avoidance of that. Osafu Mafu did not and I challenge you okay. play the tape again. Osafu okay. Mafu did not say that in the Sino Hydro Agreement hmm. there were behind the scenes matters he didn't say that. that had to be linked to Aisha's matter. He never said it. And play okay. the tape again. Okay. Yeah, are you able to tell what he, he meant by behind it? It's not about, am I able to tell what he meant? Mm. It is about what it is. Okay. He's, he, what Osafu Mafu was basically saying that at the level of government, bilateral relationships, mm. you can exercise such an option. And that option of deporting the woman came to bear. Okay. Now, don't also forget that the Chinese authorities eh, openly said that it is not their nationals who can and engage in galam say okay but no, we like ourselves our institutions Let must be seen to be enforcing our laws against illegal mining you heard the chinese government saying i that. did sami come in uh we will we'll get uh, the tape to play uh sami okay. no you can so, play it now uh, uh, yeah, please they will, they will look for it sami yeah. Please. Sammy, come in. Right. So uh, this is where we all, are. Let me start. The minister has resigned. Roxin Bukhari's resignation. Mm. And uh, Bright, I would want to submit and submit very forcefully that the resignation of the minister it is totally meaningless and useless until it leads to his prosecution and punishment and the prosecution of all other crooked members of the Akufuada government who have been found to have compromised our fight against Galamse and who have amassed wealth through corrupt practices under this Galamse fight. Because really, what are we talking about? We are talking about a minister of state. Do you want to rely on useless who, or you want to... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I said, my I colleague said, at the back. I said, I said, we lawyers may have a better way of communicating. But, 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 Hold on, hold on, please. You see, what are we talking about? You we are talking about a, a minister of state mm. who has been caught on tape attempting to bribe a journalist in a frantic effort to kill a story that exposes the unethical conduct of a judge and the illegal mining operations of a Chinese mining company called Shanzi, who have been devastating our lands and forests in the Upper East region. That is what we are talking about. He is a lawyer, he knows. That what that minister was engaging on that tip is prescribed by Section 244 of the Criminal Offenses Act of Ghana, which makes bribery and corruption on the part of public officials a crime. And so the mere resignation of Roxin Bukhari is no sufficient remedy for his what we want to see is an immediate arrest and prosecution of Roxen Bukhari and his punishment, which will help us to achieve the needed deterrence, which will discourage other public officials from engaging in similar conduct. That is what we want to see. And that is why I made the point that this resignation will be useless. It means nothing until it leads to the eventual prosecution of that public officer.
punishment. In this craft, people who are languishing in jail for two years, three years, five years for stealing cassava and plantain. And yet politicians engage in heinous crimes and get away with that. And so that is the first thing we want to see. Mm. But you see, Bright, in calling for the prosecution and punishment of Roxanne Bukhari, we must also be fair because the law is no respecter of persons. The, there is nobody is above the law. Okay, how does Mr. Afenio Markin and the MPP reconcile the resignation of Roxin Bukhari with the fact that somebody like Mr. Charles Bissu still continues to stay in office, drawing salaries at the expense of the taxpayer and so on? Charles Bissu is also a public officer, a presidential staffer who has been caught not on Isn't audio, the fact that he's but, drawn salaries? But, but of course, it, it, he's still working as a presidential staffer, being paid, okay. of course. You see, who has been caught on video demanding and collecting huge sums of money from foreign nationals, compromising the fight against Galamse, actually facilitating and promoting Galamse by Chinese, caught on tape. How many months has it been? Has the present attention been drawn to that? Why is he still at office? Or is it a case of animal farm that some people are more human than others? Or is it because some come from, in quotes, resource deficient regions? That some can be sacrificed and because others are considered as boys of President Akufo, they can continue to stay in office in the face of brazen impunity and corruption? So let us begin to see a consistent application of the law. And you see, I, wouldn't, I, I want to also submit that until we begin to prosecute some of these public officials who are aiding Galamse by foreign nationals and all that, this whole resignation will amount to nothing. Is that this issue does not change what the likes of the Minister of what the uh, Minister for Local Government, Honorable Haji Alima Mahama, said some time ago that MMDC is in the Akufuado government were engaged in Galamse, promoting Galamse, and so on. It doesn't change the fact that currently, as we speak, the member of parliament for Manson Kwanta, Professor Kwam, who is his colleague, MPP member of parliament, says that illegal Chinese miners are having a field day in his constituency, mining left, right, center, destroying water bodies and our forest cover in the area. It doesn't change the fact that, according to the CEO of the Forestry Commission, Sir John, there are certain higher ups in the Akufuado government who are undermining the fight, promoting Galamse by foreign nationals, Chinese, and so on. So we must begin to see government dealing decisively with these issues, prosecuting people, punishing people, before we can achieve that deterrence. And you see, it wouldn't also change the disgraceful and insulting comments of the senior minister, Honorable Yao Osafomafo, which my brother, senior at the bar, has sought to rationalize and justify on this platform. As I was sitting, I was, as I was listening to him, right, I was cringing in my, in my, in my seat. I said, what is Mr. Afenio Markin talking about? Did he listen to a different tape from what we've all listened to? If he wants a direct quotation from the tape, I will quote that for him. So read it. Listen, this is what Yawasa from Afo said in the tape. He says, we have a very, he was asked a question as to why Aisha was not prosecuted, but deported. And this was his answer. Yeah, no, we so have a he, very good he relationship. Said, he said, do, please. He was yeah, asked it, a question good, as no, no, to why no, no, Aisha no, was it, not prosecuted. It's good, it's good, it's but good you brought this up. Yes, yes. And it's good so for let me quote him. So and I, it is for repeat viewers. The question. Repeat the question. The question you, was why Aisha Hwai was, not, was prosecuted. not prosecuted and sanctioned, but, but was deported. Thank you. So, so let me read it. He says, we have a very good relationship with China. Yes. Today, the main company that is helping to develop the infrastructure system in Ghana is Sino Hydro, a Chinese company. Yes. With these kinds of arrangements, there are other things behind the scenes. Yes. He continued. He says, putting that lady, Aisha Wan, in jail in Ghana is not going to solve our economic problems. Thank you. It is not going to make you or me happy. Yes. That's not important. The question I would want to please, ask you, please, 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 allow me to make please. my point, please. Uh, uh, please. Right. Allow me to make so my point. You so, allow so you see, the prosecution uh, uh, and jailing of the Nias make Afenio Makin happy. No, no, no. Spinning. Nobody's spinning. Spinning. Listen, listen. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Allow, hold on. Allow, allow me, me. Please. Allow me, please. You were just talking about conduct at the bar. Sorry, you are at the bar. No, no, you're right, you're right. Listen, I was trying to straighten you. Just trying to straighten you. These are allowed. These are permitted. Hold on, just, hold on. Is it now? What's up for my phone? You were asked a direct question. You were asked a direct question. Why didn't you prosecute the woman? 
Why did you file a nolly prosequel? Why did you discontinue that matter? This Aisha we are talking about is not any normal Galamsey person. She was the queen of Galamsey, and so on. The woman, the, the, the mini, senior minister says, we have a very good relationship with China. The infrastructure developments we are currently embarking on port is even being done by a Chinese company, Sino Hydro. And with these transactions, certain things happen behind the scenes. What was he talking about? He proceeds to say that jailing Aisha Wan will not make anybody happy. It will not solve our problems. I want to ask Osafo Manfo, President Ekufuado, Afenio Makin, and all other people who think like them, that will the prosecution and jailing of Guineans bring happiness to you? Would that make you happy? Would that solve our economic problems? Will the prosecution and jailing of Ofoswan Pofo solve our problems? Would that make you happy? Guineans are languishing in jail because of this Galamsey fight. People have been shot, maimed, and killed because of this Galamsey fight. Equipment have been bent and destroyed. The capital and investments of people have been destroyed in their own country. And yet foreign nationals can engage in brazen impunity, destroying our water bodies, environment. President Tekufuado and Afenio Makin says it doesn't matter. What matters is Sino Hydro. What matters is money. Just like Esau in the Bible sold, you know, his, his, his position as the elder son of Jacob, uh, of, of Isaac, to his younger brother Jacob for food. They are ready to trade our laws, our environment, our resources, our water bodies. They don't care about the next generation or because of a so-called butter deal. And you are here justifying that? Listen, since Osafo Mafu spoke, government has not you know, seen the need to contradict him. You know that Osafo Mafu in the hierarchy uh, of the Akufuado government is actually the third most powerful person in government. At his vetting, he told us that he doesn't report to any other person but President Akufuado himself. He says he doesn't even report to the vice president of Ghana. And what he said was a disclosure of and a revelation of the inner thinking of the Akufuado government and what actually so formed the basis of that Noli prosecutor. If the deputy Listen, uh, minister says it is not the position of government, if would you your, also want to if say your that grandfather tells you a story, will you go to your father to ask him whether that is true or not? The senior minister is talking. And the minister who was not even at the ministry at the time says, oh, he's not talking about government's position. You see, clearly, listen. The interpretation. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You are making a mistake. The interpretation. The, the, the interpretation, interpretation being placed no. on it was what, what the deputy said. minister was saying. Uh, okay, is hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't twist it. Don't twist it. I am not twisting. He's accusing all of us. Don't twist it. I'm twisting facts. He's the only one telling the truth. I'm just saying that the deputy minister said. Hold on, hold on. The deputy minister said. Hold on, hold on. Right. Let me conclude. Read again. Let me conclude. Read again. No. Let me conclude. You need to understand what you write. In Tanzania. Listen. In Tanzania. Concluded. Maybe, Let, maybe we'll, if Afenio Makin cares to know. We'll play the tape before. Hold on. So in you, Tanzania, you, you, you another Chinese woman called Yang Felan, I'm sure you are very, you know, apprised with that matter, was engaged in the poaching of elephant tusk in contravention of the laws of Tanzania. Mm. This woman had served as the vice chairman for the China-Tanzania Business Council for years. In fact, she relocated to Tanzania in the 1970s. In spite of that, in spite of Tanzania's relationship with China, and in spite of all the things which happened behind the scenes relative to Tanzania-China bilateral relations, the woman was prosecuted in Tanzania and convicted. Today, she's serving the prison term of 15 years. If we had done that to Aisha, we would have been able to achieve that deterrence so that tomorrow, if Chinese foreign nationals are coming to our country to engage in Galamse and all manner of crimes, destroying our environment and all that, mm. they will think twice. That is the golden opportunity we missed when we decided to let Aisha wine off the hook. And I think that you should be embarrassed by that. Let, let's on TV comment, to but, justify that but, but, uh, no, by saying that, oh, uh, what Osafo Mafo said, there was nothing wrong with it. The man says, no, let's we, take let, some comments we allowed uh, Aisha wine off the hook mm. because... We have a good relationship with China. Sino Hydro is a Chinese company, and they are the ones currently embarking on all these infrastructure projects that will develop this country. Mm. And so prosecuting the woman would not have solved our problems. It wouldn't have made anybody happy, and so on. So the, he, he was the one who drew a linkage between the discontinuance of the criminal trial of Asha Wan and the Sino Hydro deal. Honourable that is not honorable the market, pro prosecuting uh, Honorable Roxin Bukhari is, is, wouldn't be out of tune. You're not against that. Right. Whilst we wait for Johnny to come in and, and make some comments. Right. Since uh, 
Sami wants us to have a constructive debate. I'm not an expert on foreign affairs mm. and issues of bilateral relations between countries. But at least, can he answer this question if he cares to? What triggered the decision by the Mahama government in accepting those uh, ex Guantanamo detainees mm -hmm. into this country? Okay. The acceptance of those ex Gitmo detainees were not in contravention with our criminal code. They had not engaged in Galamse in Ghana. They had not shot anybody. They had not killed anybody. And so clearly, that is proper bilateral, you know, diplomatic <laughs> arrangements. Mm. But here we are talking about somebody who has committed crimes according to the engineer she worked with. The engineer actually granted an interview to Joy FM last week and said, I saw Aisha Hwine shooting a Ghanaian citizen and actually killing the Ghanaian citizen. And there are so many reports of such cases. Okay. You don't treat the two the same because they are not the same. Okay, no, they are not the same. Uh, they are not the same. The considerations uh, 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 no, went into market. the Gitmo. Let me, let me take not some comments. I'll come back. So. It was Johnny. not for Sino Hydro. Yes, but welcome once again. Let's take some money. comments and come it back. For that. Thank Did you very much. We're going to our WhatsApp call. So defend this. No, but the man never said that. Oh, he said that. You I've guys are just spinning. Wait, you, you, don't worry. We'll, we'll okay. clear the tape before we leave. Let, let's right. Johnny, Johnny it says, uh, it's good the minister resigned, but they should investigate uh, when he's found guilty. He should be punished. Os uh, uh, Osama Salia from uh, Savannah region. Mugis Mohammed in Tamale says, good morning, Bright. Ghana is interested. The minister resigned, and we can't see the resignation letter, only to see the president's acceptance letter. Wow. Hmm. The MPP government is just into loot. They have neglected the ordinary Ghanaian. Bright, kindly come to Takwa and see how bad our roads are. Meanwhile, Takwa is a very stronghold of the ruling government. Kudos to Sami Jemfi, Dani in Takwa, a cyanide. And uh, A.U. Farouk in Tamale says, good morning. Ghana is now under serious economic crisis. Bread makers are on strike in the northern region due to high increment in white flour. Bonti Benjamin Achime Buakwa says, when Jifa Akuativo resigned under the incompetent one due to the 3.6 million bus re Branding chop chop. The NDC didn't attribute it to tribalism. And if they care to know, Honorable Roxin Bukhari is not the first person to step aside under the able Akufuado's government. The Honorable William Ejepon Kwetu, MP for Akimoda and former Deputy Minister of Agri, did the same about a year and a half ago. But they have failed to put on their tribal spec. They have put on their tribal spectacle. Enough of NDC's kindergarten politics. Hashtag say no to tribal politics. And it says, till now, renowned media houses have not spoken about the stipends accrued to NAPCO trainees. For your information, they have not been paid uh, for the months of March and April, which is momentarily ending today. Such disaster. Famous Fletcher in Bato and suspected tardy girls uh, kidnapper jail 36 months for cell break. Just 36 months for a criminal like this? I think the sentence is too light. What kind of country do we have uh, ourselves in? Meanwhile, someone who stole something less than 5K was sentenced to seven years imprisonment from Abladi Efie Kumazongo in Takradi. And good morning, Bright. Please ask Mr. Afenyo Marking if he could have played the role uh, he played in the UEW matters if he was an NDC. Could an NDC MP have done the same in an MPP regime? Uh, he's asking uh, that particular question there. And, uh, well, he says, uh, in fact, the MPP government is putting more tears in the eyes of Ghanaians. It's a great lesson for us in 2020. Uh, please bring back the Takwadi girls now. Agbe, uh, Agbe in Peje. And when will Sami Jeffy stop lying? I'm sure no objective-minded person will listen to him after 2019 if he continues to lie at this alarming rate. Good morning to you, Honorable Afenyo Marki. John in Bato. Good morning, Bright. Is Honorable Marki saying commenting on Aisha? One issue is petty. God save Ghana. Francis Brigade in Kaswa. Senior Bright, I thank you very much indeed. Okay, grateful. Obviously, let Francis uh, we're, from Brigade we're, is not yes. All I wanted to say. No, I think you, 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 you yeah, let him. Then you, you, you wrap up. Uh, another from your market. You see, I, I, I simply asked them, uh, Sami, about the Gitmo two issue, to make a point. And he's asking if you are comparing the two. Ah, or we are talking about a bilateral relationship. Mm. The justification by the Mahama government that was that look. We have a relationship with the United States. And under such a relationship, 
we can consider this mm. in spite of all the those people had been tried and acquitted uh, 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 they have not been convicted I, of any crimes I, I, okay so you, you all right I, I agree with you yes. thank yes, you for yes. thank you for refreshing my memory mm. Mm. so they had been tried and acquitted, acquitted. according to you no but by the law facts, yes. i mean we've got well, well, no 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 i'm co i'm relying on your fact okay i i mean to say i don't have the facts okay please so i'm relying on your fact okay that they've been tried and acquitted so if that is the case, per what you are saying, mm. why not the American government releasing them to their own states, their countries of origin, where they come from? Why bring them to Ghana? Why should Ghana accept them? Why? You are saying that somebody in government is telling Ghanaians that, look, for bilateral reasons, we decided to exercise the discretion of deporting this lady mm -hmm. instead of doing a prosecution here. Let's deport. Do you think it is right? I'm saying that if some, it's an exercise of discretion. And, and you think it is I'm right? I'm saying that it's an exercise of discretion. Governor, don't ask me, don't ask me, okay. don't ask me whether or not it is right. I am saying that, that. An, an, an officer in government in that Situation mm. evaluating all issues, mm. relationship all issues, please, has exercised a discretion. Let's deport, just as in your time, you exercise a discretion to accept and those ask, details. I mean, I have, let me ask you, and you are saying that 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 because because mm. somebody was having money and was going to give money it was in exchange oh, so was that what was said it's because of he never said board. that that is where that is okay. your spin oh, i, I don't want you to, to, to stop Brian, he never said that. make this concluding uh, remark okay oh, so but, let, never let, said that okay, okay. okay. right don't, 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 don't aid him i'm not going to aid him i think that we see this is the kind of thing that they will do pay play the tip i'll challenge you when would you play you are you are here right now because we are having a discussion here so you are always walking in harry quickly play the tip play the tip now to end this matter hold on Enough yeah, of this. Uh, Harriet, oh. show the record. Yes. Please play the tip and then we'll Enough of play. this. This, play this the tip. Play the tip. Enough of it. With China. They are the main company that is helping develop the infrastructure system in Ghana. It's a sign of ID. It's a Chinese company. It's the one that is going to help process our website and provide about $2 billion to us. But when there are these kind of arrangements, there are other things behind the scenes. Putting that lady in jail in Ghana is not going to solve your economic problems. It's not going to make you happy or me happy. That's important. The most important thing is that it's been deported out of Ghana. So we must not say it's not wrong. There are many other things beyond what you see in this matter. And everybody is wide away. The most important thing is that it's not an we have to find this established location. We are protecting our family. And we have a far more important than one Chinese woman who has a more important woman. Okay, all right. Um, so that's the tip. Let me conclude. We are I getting think Honorable decision. has called an own goal oh, by calling for that's the what you think. plate. Mm. I, I advise him that what he was engaging. You don't need to advise me. Poor attempt no. at nationalization. Did the man say so? They are senior Enough members of some of, of these things. People who are, 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 if you like, known defenders of the Akufuado government, like Malik Kwekubakon Jr., who have come out to say that this matter is bad, is indefensible. It, it cannot ah, be just so today you want to listen let's today kokubaku's view on. we just listen to the kokubaku's view is acceptable the man was asked a simple question you know, why did you enter nolly prosequi relative to the criminal trial of asha mm. he says oh you know that we have a good relationship with china sino hydro is even a chinese company and they are the ones giving us all these rules and with these transactions there are other things behind the scenes Mr. Fenyo Market, what, what are those other things? No, no, you should say so. You what are, are that, those you, other things you he was to, alluding to? You, you so the point, you. the point is that it is clear, very so, clear. So say it. It is only Mr. Fenyo Market who can see that. Professor Kwesi Prempe and all these people have seen it. So say it. Uh, uh, some lawyer, okay. Samu Kujeto, uh, 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 lawyer Samu Kujeto, your senior at the bar, ah, senior so member of your it. tradition. They've all seen that. You are the only say person it. justifying this matter. Okay. And so the point I want to make here is clear. 
you traded our loss, our resources, our environment, water bodies, and the future of the next generation for a so-called butter deal. And that is something that is not correct an issue for okay. come 7 December 2020. Okay, I'm grateful. And, and finally, uh, Brian, let me make the point that it is How many prosecutions did you engage in when you were in office on the much fight against corruption Galamse by President Ekufuado has failed. CTFM has declared the fight against Galamse lost. Joy FM has done the same thing. All the journalists who follow the fight are now reporting to us that the water bodies which used to look yellowish in color are today looking brownish. And that is because of the increased okay. spate of Galamse. We have to wrap up the Especially by I'm Chinese and foreign He's a national communications officer of the NDC, Sami Devis, his name, and a member of parliament for a photo constituency, Alexander. I think you're marking gentlemen. I'm grateful for your morning with us. I wish you a happy workers' day tomorrow Thanks morning. Thanks for having us. And hope to see you some other time. Good morning once again.